Hey guys, this is Eve with Scrapbooking with Me, and this is what we're making today. This is made from a cereal box, and I made it for my granddaughter. It's got magnets on the back so she can hang it on the inside of her locker. So let's get started. Okay, this is kind of hilarious because I thought I was filming and I wasn't, so let me tell you what I did. All I did was cut the top flaps off of my box, and then I measured down from the top four and a half inches and made a little mark on both sides and then I just join them by drawing a line across and now I've taken my ruler and I put it at this point right here and I brought it down to that line and drew me a line there and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side and I'm going to try to keep this where you can see it it may be a little bit hard okay I'm going to put it right there in that corner and right there hopefully I can hold it there that it's slipping too bad. There we go. Close enough. I can always straighten it up with scissors. And we're going to cut this part off. This is where your Tim Holtz shears comes in really, really handy because they go through this chipboard like butter. whack a little bit of it off first so that I can make sure that I get straight down to that line right there. And then we're just going to go straight across. There we go, we've got that cut. So that is the makings of our box. If you have any areas that you need to do a little bit of snipping or trimming, you can go ahead and do that now. But that looks pretty good to me. Now, my granddaughter loves pink. So what I have done is I have taken pink cardstock and I have cut two inch strips. These are two inches by 11 inches and I've got uh, four of those I do believe and we're going to score those in the middle at one inch Okay, and then we have four pieces that are cut at two inches by seven and five eighths. And we've got four of those. We're going to score those in the middle as well. Okay, so go ahead and fold these. So just fold and burnish. And it doesn't matter if you've got them perfectly straight or if you've got a little bit off here or there doesn't matter we're going to cover these this is just to go over the edges so that we don't have that raw chipboard or that box showing okay so what these are going to do is they're going to go just like that over the edge and of course we'll trim that back but then we can put our pattern paper or our cute paper on top 
of these and then there won't be anything showing. It keeps you from having to try to wrap your paper around. So we're going to put that down like that. I'm going to use some art glitter glue because I know it will hold. And you're going to put it right at the bottom. Kind of even it up at the bottom. And then make sure that it's right up against your box. As close as possible. And now we're going to put some right here. And now I am going to just mark this and cut it off. I didn't measure in the beginning. I'm just going to mark it with my pencil and cut this off because I knew if I measured in the beginning I probably would not get it exactly straight. So I just decided to go ahead and make them the full length and then I could always trim them off. Now we have those covered so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these and we're going to put these right on top of that just like that. We're not going to trim the corner out or anything we're gonna put them right on top and I need to trim off that right there just a tiny bit these are gonna go right there just flush on the bottom and then we'll do the back and the tops and I always do a dry fit just to make sure that I have trimmed it correctly I have cut a piece that I'm going to put in the bottom to kind of make the bottom more stable just in case she drops, you know, quite a few things in there. We don't want it to, the bottom to fall out of it. And I have cut this at two and an eighth by uh, seven and three eighths, but you're, you'll need to measure your box to see what size you need to cut yours. Yours is probably going to be different than mine. So I think all of these little boxes are different. I don't think any of them are exactly the same. And we're just going to drop this right down in there, hopefully. Yep. Drop it down in there and give it a few presses. And there we go. We've got a nice sturdy bottom in there. And then we're going to put these. This one's going to go here and we're going to put one up there. So we'll put this one on. These come together really quick. I made them a few years ago for my kids. Well, I said a few years ago. It's probably been more than a few. And they used them for a couple of years before they actually tore them completely up. So, it's something good you can do to recycle and something that is useful for the kids, for their lockers. So, a nice project. Okay, we'll put that one there. We're going to put one up here to cover that. Make sure I don't need to trim that off a little. Oh, I think it'll be good. So what I did is the piece that I cut off of these, I'm just taking that piece and I'm just cutting it just so that it'll go right there. I don't want it to go all the way up because I'm going to put paper down through there anyway. But I just want to cover this raw edge right here. So what I did is cut it and then cut a little bit of a angle on there and then I'm just going to put this one up against it and cut this one the same way. going to put that right there. So we've got that one covered and then we'll cover this side and then we'll be ready to start putting some paper on here. Well there we go. Now we're ready to start putting paper and I'm going to cover the inside 
um, up probably all the way down. It's not going to be that much. It's probably going to take just a sheet of paper, half a sheet of paper. So I'm going to cover the inside and then I'm going to put the designer paper on the outside. I have gone ahead and put a piece in here too and I did it just like this. So I put a piece inside, two inches, scored it in the center and folded it and put it in there because I know that my box is not completely square. Most of these boxes aren't so I just did that in case when I cut this that I have some of that on the side showing. Now this piece, I'll tell you what I cut mine, but of course your box is going to be different. Even if you've got this same box, it's going to be a different size, I know. I cut this at seven and a quarter by ten and three quarters. And you just need to measure the inside of your box to see what you need to cut yours at. And I'm going to put that right in there. And I'm doing some really bright colors because I know she loves bright colors. And, you know, she's in the, let's see, seventh grade this year. So she's, she's still into the bright colors and flags and all that kind of stuff. So she loves pink. So we're doing pink for her. So again, using my art glitter glue, making sure that I get it up to the edges, hopefully. And then I'm just going to slide that down in there. Don't worry about it if you get some of your art glitter glue right up at the edge because you can just wipe that off and it doesn't leave any kind of marks or anything. I'm just going to use my ruler and go down in there and press that down. Don't worry about down at the bottom if you've got that perfectly straight. Just kind of get it straight across here. That's the part that's going to be seen. So let's get that to press down. And now I cut my the sides and I just measured the outside and then cut it a little bit shy because we don't want to we don't want it to be cut too thick that it won't go down in there. And one, of my, one side of my box is a little bit wider than the other. Like I said, these boxes are not, you know, they're made by a manufacturer, so. Okay, so this is what we want to do on this side. Now, I, instead of having to put the, glue this on there and then try to trim it close, I am going to take my ruler, I'm going to make sure that that's right up against the side, and then I'm just going to use my pencil and I'm going to mark that just like that and then I'm going to cut on the inside of that line and that's going to give me a little bit of room there. Let's see if that works. There we go. So just cut on the inside of that line and you've got it. It goes right down in there. So we're going to go ahead and glue this one in and then do the other one the same way. I don't know about you, but I love upcycling. I love taking something that normally you would throw away and using it to make something useful, especially for my grandkids. I love making things for them because they seem so appreciative of just the little things. And I use, again I use my ruler to go down in there and press it down. So there we go there. Making sure I put my flags the right way. <laughs> Alright, we're going to do this one the same way. Then again lay it down and take your ruler something that will reach down in there and just press that down. There we go. So we've got the inside covered. Now we want to cover this and what I did was I cut a, and let me find my pieces. I think this is it. Let's see. Nope. I have to find my pieces that I cut. Here they are. She loves ice cream cones, so 
we're going to put that right there. Now this one I cut and I again I just measured so you'll have to measure yours. I cut this at seven and five eighths by six and a quarter and I left I cut it so that I could leave a little bit of that pink showing around that. So we're going to go ahead and put our art glitter glue on here. You see how fast this art glitter glue sticks? You don't have to wait for it to dry. That's what I love about it. So put that down, kind of centering it up. And then press it down. Just make sure that you have the edges glued down really well because that's what's going to get some so there we go we've got that uh -oh. I'm going to turn it upside down and press it against my desk I'm put my hand in there and I'm just pressing it to make sure that that glue adheres really well We're going to do the sides and this is what I'm going to do on the side. I'm going to lay it down on there just like I want it to go and then I'm going to mark, whoops, I'm going to mark down here where I want it to start slanting and then I'm going to mark up here where I want it to end and I'm just going to cut that off like that cut that slant off so we'll do it we'll mark it with our ruler it's a lot easier to do this than it is to try to put it on there and then trim it with your scissors again I'm just cutting right on the inside of that line that I just marked let's see if that's going to work yep perfectly there we go so we are going to you know it's a good thing that I did that right I didn't even look to see if I had my ice cream cones upside down or right side up sometimes I get in a hurry and I forget to look then I have to cut my paper all over again that's not good okay so we got that let me go ahead and put some glue right down here you can always go back and add glue when you have this little fine tip. Just slide it under there and add your glue on. And then, so we did the other side the same way as we did this one. So we've got all of that covered. And now what we want to do, and I'm not going to cover a lot of the back. I am just going to, I'm not even going to worry about the design or anything because this is going to be up against her locker but I am going to put these big magnets on here and I'm going to make sure that they are pointing the right way hopefully and I'm just going to put four that way it will stick to her locker really well even if she puts something heavy in there So if we put these down, two right there, and two right there, that should hold really, really well. There, I think that's a little bit better. Sorry about that, I had to adjust my camera. I think I'm going to have to get another little tripod hanger because mine is getting loose and it just keeps drifting down on me. So if you see it drifted down I am so sorry all right what are we going to put on the back let's see that's not going to be wide enough I had a piece let's see I think this will work great right here oh yeah that's going to be plenty wide enough and I'm just going to run it all the way down almost to the bottom so we're going to put that on the back just to 
cover up the magnets. Like I said, you don't even have to put anything on there if you don't want to. But if she takes it off and wants to move it somewhere, I don't want everybody seeing the cereal box. So we're just going to do it that way. Now I'm going to run some glue around the magnets just so that it will stick right up against those magnets. Okay, so there is the back and it has our magnets under there. Alright, so that is almost it. But I am going to do, I am going to personalize it a little bit for her. So what I, I have, these are old. Somebody didn't buy them, so I kept them, and I'm so glad now that I did. They are from Prima, and if I can find a link to these, I will link them below. I'm not sure I can still get them, but I might can find them somewhere. They're the Resist Alphabet from Prima. I love these things, but it seemed like nobody ordered them. I don't think they really knew what they were. I've already covered the B, and you can see... The resist on that. Isn't that cute? Now, her name is Bethany, so B-E, and I'm just coloring these with my big brush Faber-Castell markers. They're permanent once they dry, so I won't have to worry about this coming off on anything on her or anything like that. And I'm coloring them while they're on the sheet because the sheet helps them to, helps it to stick. I don't want to pull it off first. And I'm just using some of the colors that's in the paper that I used. B-E-T. See where our T might be. Okay, we'll have to pull our other ones out to get our T. And I may just have to put Beth because I'm not sure that I'm going to have enough room to put her complete name using these big letters. Let's just pull some of them off and see. I think this is already dry, so we're just going to pop that center out. I might could write it this way and have enough room. So let's see. I'm just going to easily, you know, I don't want to put these down. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to cut these out, leaving the um, that paper behind them. That will allow me to lay them down on there. And then I'll just go up here and cut off a piece of this sheet. And I could go get my wax paper and use that, but I don't want to get up and go get it. I got a big lazy streak today. Okay, that'll work to put it down through there. So we can go ahead and start sticking these down. There we go. We have Bethany down through there. I think that's cute. And I think I am going to put a little piece across here on the bottom just to cover that up. Uh, I'm not even going to worry about what it looks like. That will work right there. I don't even care that the ice cream cones go crooked. They go sideways because th that's going to be the bottom. And it's really not going to be seen, like I said, unless she does move it or puts it up really high somewhere. So we're just going to cover a little piece just to make sure that none of that cereal box shows. And if I don't cover it, I'll have somebody that says, you should have covered the bottom. <laughs> so we have the bottom covered now. So there is all of it covered up. And it does have the magnets on the back so she can stick it to her locker on the inside and have room to put all of her goodies down in here. Tomorrow we're going to make her a little notebook that she can put down in here that's where she can keep up with her um, classes and schedules and that kind of thing. So 
Now I am going to go ahead, just because the back of this is so busy and these letters kind of blend in, I'm going to use my Sharpie pen and I'm just going to go in and just outline them. It'll make them stand out a little bit and make them show up a little bit better. So there we go. That makes them stand out a little bit better from the background. And that is it. If you enjoyed this, if you did, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.